Hello, good morning, students. This will raise Azizi again. We're going to finish the chapter today, chapter number two. We are not afraid to die if we can all be together. That was written by Gordon Cook and Alan East. I'll just give you a quick introduction before I read the further paragraphs, the rest of the paragraphs. If you remember, a businessman on July 1976, who was also narrator of this story, he set sail from England. He wanted to duplicate the round the world voyage made 200 years earlier by Captain Cook. On January 2nd, huge waves shook the deck and broke over the ship. They had survived for 15 hours, but it was quite difficult to reach Australia at about 6 p.m. on January 6th. They anchored offshore a tiny island where all the 28 inhabitants came to cheer them. So, I'll just read the further paragraphs and then I'll explain you. So, I'm going to read the paragraphs on the page number 15 from Then I remember we had another electric pump under the chart room floor. I connected it to an out pipe and was thankful to find that it worked. So if we re remember in the previous video I explained that uh, uh, how the two hand pumps <coughs> started uh, blocking uh, due to the debris floating in the water and uh, their electric pump was short circuited and then also the narrator found that the two spare hand pumps were wrenched. So now he remembered that uh, he had another electric pump under the chart room floor. And when he tried, if it, was, if it was working, then he was very thankful and happy that it worked. The night dragged on with an endless, bitterly cold routine of pumping steering and working the radio so what the narrator is saying the night seemed endless it was longer and very cold they were pumping out the water continuously and steering steering the wheel to control the ship and also they kept trying on the radio to speak to someone for help. We were getting no re replies to our Mayday calls. Mayday calls, SOS calls for uh, uh, getting help. So they were not getting any response on their Mayday calls, which was not surprising in this remote corner of the world. Remote is distant, like uh, the area where they were. It was quite far, obviously, and nobody, like, no ship uh, goes in that way. So that's the reason they were not getting replies on their mayday calls. Sue's head had swollen alarmingly. She had two enormous black eyes, and now she sewed a, a deep cut on her arm. When I asked why she hadn't made more of her injuries before this, she replied, I didn't want to worry you when you were trying to save us all. So now his daughter Suzanne's uh, head had always swollen and it was quite like uh, uh, fearful. She had two enormous black eyes so her eyes were become black due to the her due to the that uh, you know like uh, she had also a bump uh, just above uh, the eyes and now she showed that she had also a deep cut on her arm and when the narrator in 
asked that uh, why she didn't tell this to him. So she replied that uh, she didn't want to make him worry because he was trying to save all of them. By morning on January 3, the pumps had the water level sufficiently under control for us to take two hours rest in rotation. So the night passed and next morning on January 3rd, the pumps had the water level sufficiently under control for us to take two hours rest in rotation. So they had uh, pumped out the uh, water, you know, like the water level was under control and uh, now they could take rest for two hours, but still they had to do in rotation means one person taking rest, the other person doing pumping. But we still had a tremendous leak somewhere below the waterline and on checking I found that nearly all the boats now on the page number 16 main rib frames were smashed down to the keel. The main rib frames, frames of wood, you know the main frames and they were smashed down to the keel. keel is a long piece of it could be either wooden or made of steel um, through the ship so it basically controls things in fact there was nothing holding up whole section of the starboard hull except a few uh, cupboard uh, partitions so what the narrator is saying there was nothing holding up a whole section of the starboard hull. Hull is the outer side of the, uh, the ship, the board, except a few cupboard partitions. So there was nothing left much to hold the, uh, the right side, the, the complete the ship, except few cupboard partitions. We had survived for 15 hours since the wave hit, but wave walker wouldn't hold together long enough for us to reach Australia. So they had to go to Australia and uh, uh, they had already survived since the waves hit and uh, it was nearly 15 hours. And the narrator was quite sure that the, the damages the wave walker the ship had they would not be able to reach Australia in that condition. I checked our charts and calculated that there were two small islands a few hundred kilometers to the east. One of them Isle Amsterdam was a French scientific base. Our only hope was to reach these pinpricks in the vast ocean. So thinking that uh, they would not be able to reach Australia in this condition, so he started thinking something else. He checked the chart and uh, what he found out that there were two islands and one of them was Isle Amsterdam Island. That was French, uh, French uh, scientific base basically. And that was somewhere around uh, a few hundred kilometers to the east. So he thought that that could be uh, our only hope to be survived if they reached to that island. But that was like a pinpricks in the vast ocean. Pinpricks, very small holes. Meaning, because the ocean was uh, very large or vast and the islands uh, they were very small so it was going to be really hard to find them but unless the wind and seas abated so we could hoist sail our chances would be slim indeed the great wave had put our auxiliary engine out of action 
abetted a b a t e d abetted means less furious but unless the wind and sea is abetted so we could host sail so what the narrator is saying if the wind and uh, sea were not furious but not like the the waves they had uh, if if they do not face that kind of situation again so they could host sail sail that you know the main sail which helps to um, float the ship host you know like um, you know uh, putting it up and he had that feeling that chances were very slim very narrow very uh, small the great wave had put their auxiliary engine out of action auxiliary the helping and the additional engine so that was also out of action on january 4th after 36 hours of continuous pumping we reached the last few centimeters of water so on january 4th after 36 hours of uh, continuous pumping they could only uh, like um, go few centimeters now we had only to keep pace with the water is still coming in pace means like keeping the same speed so they all had to do is to keep the uh, same speed and uh, uh, with the still water coming we could not set any sail on the main mast pressure on the rigging would simply pull the damaged section of the hull apart so we hoisted the storm jib and headed for where i thought the two islands were what the narrator is saying that he didn't want to give the pressure on the rigging rigging is the the ropes which tied up with the uh, main sail uh, main mast so because if it could just you know like uh, uh, break the hull apart the outer side of the ship so what they did they hoisted the storm jib the smaller one which is a uh, um, a triangle in shape uh, you must have seen in the picture and they headed where they thought that uh, the the two islands could be mary found some corn beef and cracker biscuits and we ate our first meal in almost two days so since the accident happened the waves hit they had not eaten also so now his wife mary found some food corn beef and cracker biscuit so they had their first meal first food in uh, last two days but our respite was short lived at 4 pm black clouds began building up behind us within the hour the wind was back to 40 knots and the seas were getting higher but their relief so what the narrator is saying that uh, uh, they were getting relaxed but no so their relief was only short lived it was very short at about uh, 4 pm again the clouds started building up behind them and within the hour or so the wind also started blowing to 40 knots and the seas the the you know the seas the water started getting higher the weather continued to detroit detroit means became worse throughout the night and by dawn january 5th our situation was again desperate so after that the weather started getting worse and throughout the night it was the same 
and by dawn by morning early morning in the um, january 5th the situation was again the same like desperate you know when i went in to comfort the children john asked daddy are we going to die i tried to assure him that we could make it but daddy he went on we aren't afraid of dying if we can all be together you and mummy sue and i so this is the main line of the story so when he went to the children to like uh, give them comfort his son he started asking if they were going to die because the situation was that like that so the narrator tried to assure him that uh, no it won't happen and but he kept saying he continued his uh, you know sentence saying that uh, they were not afraid to die if they live all together so all together means the complete family means uh, the narrator his wife and uh, the daughter and son I could find no words with which to respond but I left the children's cabin determined to fight the sea with everything I had So he he was just speechless he couldn't answer his question or he didn't say anything and he left the cabin uh, determining means like uh, deciding that he was going to fight back with the situation and uh, whatever the the sources whatever the equipments he had he was going to use all of them to save the ship to protect the weakened starboard side i decided to have to have to toss up so you know if you remember that the starboard side the right side of that uh, ship Uh, it was more damaged so he decided to have to with the undamaged port hull facing the oncoming waves using an improvised sea anchor of heavy nylon rope and two 22 liter plastic barrels of paraffin paraffin um, uh, is um, uh, material material is uh, I, i think is liquid or something like that and barrels the containers the drums so what he did he just like um, fix the anchor using all these stuffs nylon rope and two uh, 22 liter plastic barrels of paraffin so meaning temporarily he fixed that up and uh, try to support the uh, the the hull that evening mary and i sat together holding hands as the motion of the ship brought more and more water in through the broken planks broken planks the plank planks means logs of woods so that evening the narrator and his wife sat hopelessly holding their hands together and watching that the you know like the water was is still coming through the broken planks broken uh, logs they felt they thought that their end was very near but wave walker road out the storm and by the morning of january 6 with the wind easing i tried to get a reading on the sextant sextant is an instrument to read angles the directions back in the chart room so that evening they were feeling quite uh, like um, you know hopeless and uh, they thought that they were going to die but wave walker the ship rode out the storm so he the wave it passed through is crossed the storm is survived basically basically in other way if uh, i want to explain 
and by the morning on january 6 the wind became a bit easy it was not that bad so he tried to find out the angles the directions on the sextant back in the chart room i worked on wind speeds changes of course drift and current in an effort to calculate our position the best i could determine was that we were somewhere in 150000 kilometers of ocean looking for a 65 kilometer wide island so what the uh, narrator is saying that he checked the uh, he checked on the sextant and he worked on everything like the changing the wind speeds and uh, the drift the drift means the the flow of the water and current in an effort to calculate our position so he find out he found out the, his uh, way they were where the ship was the location the position and uh, the best he could found uh, that was he thought that uh, they must be somewhere in 150000 kilometers of ocean and uh, they were looking for that island which was 65 kilometer wide while i was thinking so moving painfully joined me the left side of her head was now very swollen and her blackened eyes narrows to slits she gave me a card she had made so when the narrator was sitting and thinking uh his daughter susan she just came and uh joined him she was in pain the left side of her head was now very swollen and her blackened eyes narrowed to slits so because of the swelling her eyes were looking like deep cuts she gave me a card she had made so she had made a card which she uh, gave it to the narrator on the front she had drawn caricatures caricatures pictures of mary and me with the words so she had made a card where the the, the there were pictures of the narrator her dad and her mother mary and there was some words were written also here are some funny people did they make you laugh i laughed a lot as well inside was a message oh how i love you both so this card is to say thank you and let's hope for the best somehow we have to make it i checked and rechecked my calculations we had lost our main compass and i was using a spare which had not been corrected for magnetic variation so he kept checking his calculations and uh because uh, he had lost the main compass compass is the instrument to check directions and uh, he had a spare compass but that was not corrected for the magnetic variation i made an allowance for this and another estimate of the influence of the uh, westerly currents which flow through this part of the indian ocean so allowance means here concession so he just tried to estimate everything and uh, the the currents the flow of the water which uh, uh, flows through the part of the indian ocean so he estimated everything looking at that point as well about 2 pm 
I went on deck and asked Larry to steer a course of 185 degrees. If we were lucky, I told him with a conviction I did not feel. Conviction means here with firm belief. So what he told to Larry, he asked Larry to steer the wheel to control the ship and uh, uh, move forward to 185 degrees and he also said to Larry if they were lucky which he had a firm belief well he said with that uh, firm belief but he was not feeling from inside that it was right uh, he, he was not confident enough I would say in the other word so what he said that if they were lucky that they would find the uh, island in about uh, 5 p.m. Then with a heavy heart I went below, below the, to the cabins, climbed on my bunk, bunk I told you the, the bed and amazingly dozed off. So obviously he was tired and that he got sleep when i woke up when i woke it was 6 pm and growing dark i knew we must have missed the island and with the sail we had left we couldn't hope to beat back into the westerly winds so when he got wake up it was already 6 pm and they obviously it was getting darker so he thought that uh, they must have missed the island because they were already one hour. It, it was already crossed. And he also thought that it would not be possible to go back because of the uh, westerly currents, the flow. At that moment, a tossle head appeared by my bunk. Can I have a hug? Jonathan asked. Sue was right behind him. Tossled head disordered, which was not in order. So, at the same time when he got wake up, his son, Jonathan, he just appeared there and asked if he could hug him. And his daughter, Suzanne was just right behind Jonathan. Why am I getting a hug now? I asked. So the narrator inquired why uh, he was going to get a hug. Because you are the best daddy in the whole world and the best captain, my son replied. So now Jonathan replied that he was the best daddy, best father and best captain as well. Not today, John, I'm afraid. Why, you must be, said Sue, so in matter of fact voice. You found the island. What? I shouted. So this is the reason they wanted to give hug to the dad. And John was obviously worried about that uh, they had, must have uh, missed the island. It's out there in front of us, they charged as big as a battleship. The word charged means spoke in a group, means they both spoken at the same time. So they told him they found the island and it was just in front of them and it was ag, ag, as big as uh, a battleship. I rushed on deck and gazed with relief at the stark outline of the uh, of Isle Amster. It was only a bleak piece of volcanic rock with little vegetation. 
the most beautiful island in the world so why the narrator is saying the most beautiful island in the world because the, the island obviously saved them so the word gazed means here looked intently and star means complete and the word bleak b l e a k means bare treeless and volcanic rock the rock uh, born of the volcano vegetation plants and trees so these are the description of that island what he saw so he rushed on the deck and uh, looked intently with a relief at the stark outline of isle amsterdam so it was treeless we anchored offshore for the night and the next morning all 20 inhabitants of the island cheered as they helped us off, uh, ash, ashore so when they reached there they anchored offshore for the night offshore means like um, uh, uh, they didn't arrive at that island so they had to anchor the ship and waited i spent there night so next morning all those 20 inhabitants who were living at that island they helped them and they cheer for them with land under my feet again my thoughts were full of larry and herbie cheerful and optimistic under the direst stress direst horrible and of mary who stayed at the wheel for all those crucial hours most of all i thought of a 7 year old girl who did not want us to worry about a head injury which subsequently took six minor operations to remove a recurring blood clot between the skin and the skull and of a 6 year old boy who was not afraid to die so the girl his daughter who didn't want to obviously worry him about his uh, about her uh, deep cut and that bump and uh, her even eyes were looking like uh, slits so finally they had to operate it and uh, uh, what the narrator is saying there were six minor operations to remove the clots the blood clots that's all the chapter is finished now and i have already sent you solutions of this chapter uh, it was quite long and lengthy chapter and uh, there were so many difficult words technical words i would say uh, which we don't normally hear in uh, day to day life so let's hope that you understood well if there's anything is still left you can always contact me or discuss in the online class Thank you very much. Bye-bye.